with us today. So I want to start by asking you, because I, I find it very interesting, we often talk about interdisciplinarity here um, at InspireFest, you know, that it's not just about technology, but that it's about the arts, about social sciences, you name it. Um, am I right that you didn't start off in science at all? That's correct. Yes, I was an English major in college and afterwards was inspired by a public television show about the stars to become a scientist. So I got a late start, but I got going as quickly as I could after that. And did you work as a journalist for a while? Am I, right? I did. I, uh, right out of college, I joined the Los Angeles Times and I was uh, a copy girl in the days when they actually had copy. And now in the electronic age, that job doesn't exist. <laughs> and then I, I graduated to the news service and um, did editing and wrote some articles uh, about popular um, singers and that sort of thing. You know, teenage heartthrobs that. <laughs> And has it stood to you, that fact that you did, you know, that you had that mix of background? Uh, yes, uh, I, I think that everything that you learn in all your different uh, jobs, uh, you carry with you and it all comes out to be an advantage. So I'm a different kind of leader. I'm the director of the National Science Foundation in the US, which is a seven and a half billion dollar uh, enterprise. And we fund all of science and engineering, everything except for biomedical science. And our, our uh, aim is to do fundamental research, the very basic research that underlies discovery and invention. And that takes uh, a lot of creativity. Uh, it takes in our proposers, uh, creative, artistic, and certainly a curious flair. Uh, if you don't have curiosity, then you don't pursue knowledge deeply. So, um, so a absolutely, I think it helps to be well-rounded and to have a, a background in the arts as well as science. And tell us a little bit about the, the career at NASA. Uh, well, I was, um, my, uh, after getting my PhD, which was after the, the newspaper job was so hard, I thought it'd be easier to become a physicist than to be a journalist. So I went off to graduate school and I became literally a rocket scientist because my first project was uh, launching rockets from White Sands, New Mexico, and then uh, worked on satellite experiments. Uh, so my, my first job was at um, Los Alamos National Laboratory for a decade, and then I was whisked away to Penn State University where I became department head of astronomy and astrophysics. And there the, uh, the head of NASA, uh, whose name was Dan Golden, uh, asked, uh, interviewed me and then asked me to be his chief scientist. He, I think he was really determined to bring a woman into the agency and we really got along. And, uh, and so I became uh, the first woman and the youngest person at the time to uh, become chief scientist. And I took it as a, uh, uh, what they call a rotator position because I'd, I'd worked so hard to become tenured and be in the university. And so they have these positions in government where you can go for a limited term and then return to your university. So I did the uh, chief scientist job for three years. And when it came time to return, I was recruited to other universities in more senior positions and, uh, and became president of two universities, the University of California at Riverside and then Purdue University. We've lots of young people as well as people of my great age here today. Um, do you have sort of tips for them, you know, people who are, you know, want to reach for the sky and, you know, are very ambitious to, to do exciting things, whether it be in space or in science or in technology? Sure. Well, the, the first thing to share is that how many of you have read Lord of the Rings? That's so, quite a few. So Tolkien uh, has um, uh, a, a famous expression, all who wander are not lost. And I really always remember that because I think you can be a wanderer and explorer and not be at all lost. You're just looking for different experiences. And that's kind of the story of my life. It was a very unusual uh, pathway. 
and uh, as you've as you've heard, and so s some people are born and they uh, absolutely know at the moment of birth that they're going to become uh, an astronaut or uh, uh, an industry leader or a lawyer or a doctor or something, and others uh, like me have uh, a very career path. And so the, the first tip I would give is just that, um, just enjoy what you're doing at the moment and, uh, and learn everything you can about it and go deeply into it because your, your passion and your enthusiasm will be recognized and people will um, respond to it and then think of you for other positions. I've actually never applied for a job. I've always just been offered it and it's because um, I, I think there are things about you that, that you don't even, you don't know. Maybe your mother knows it because mothers are very keen, but, um, but, but you might not even know what you're good at and, and how you will do in certain careers, but other people will recognize that potential in you. So the second tip is to say yes more than you say no. That, um, that by opening yourself up to new experiences, even if it's a little frightening, it's a little different, uh, it can just lead you along trajectories that you didn't even imagine, you knew nothing about. Uh, and the, the third thing is don't keep on that path if you're not happy with it. That, uh, that you should uh, be always looking around for what uh, engages you. Uh, we only have one life to live and I think um, I have a friend who is fond of saying, a woman friend, I'll do anything once, twice if I like it. And I, I think that's a, a good way to think about life. And it's not your first time in Ireland. No, this is my, my second time in less than a year. As you know, we talked in November at the Science Week, and I, that was my first time since uh, the former uh, Taoiseach uh, Kenny gave me an, a certificate of Irish heritage because on my mother's side of the family, she was a McGuinness, and uh, so I uh, have a, a lot of Irish in me. And so with that, I, I came to Ireland in November to participate in Science Week, and I liked it so much, I came back and I told my husband, we simply must do a vacation in Ireland this summer. So we're really here on vacation, Anne, and as soon as this <laughs> event is, uh, is over, and I'm fully inspired uh, once again, we will head off for County Clare, where my mother's uh, ancestors came from, and enjoy the wild uh, Atlantic way. Wonderful. My, my ancestors are from Claire also, and Claire is stunning. You're going to have such a wonderful time. Um, so I'm going to say thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Anne. And have I the most wonderful vacation. We're so grateful that you took a little bit of time off to come in and say hello to, to everybody here today. And so thank you and so and much. Thank you. <laughs>